Hi, everybody. It's Barry Rosen with uh, lesson two of our spiritual astrology mini course. Um, we are going to have four classes. Um, this is lesson two on chakras. Um, I'm going to do a sound check. I did bring home my broadcast mic, but the internet is, uh, we have an, another ice storm this week. Deja vu. This one's worse than the last one. So I'm working at home rather than traveling into the office. And so what to do with the home internet. So hopefully the sound quality will be good. Let me do a sound check real quick. Um, Kathy, how's the sound? Uh, the sound's fine. Okay, great. Okay, great. Um, okay, and I'll unmute you, mute the rest of you, you know, after we do chanting. Um, okay, let's start, like we start all our classes with some bidding. Um, <clears throat> Om Ganeshaya Maha, Om Ganeshaya Maha, Om Ganeshaya Maha, Om Ganapatiya Maha, Om Ganapatiya Maha, Om Ganapatiya Maha, Vakritunda Mahakaya Suri, Koti Samaprapa, Nirvigyam Karame Deva Sala, Dhyana Mulam Guru Murti, Puja Mulam Guru Padam, Mantra Mulam Guru Vakyam, Moksha Mulam Guru Kripa, Sahana Babatu Sahano Bunaktu Sahaviriam Karva Bahai Tejasvina Matitamastu Madhushai Bahai Om Shanti 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 Om Aditaye Samaye Mangulai Buddhaye Cha Guru Shukra Shanibas Cha Rahave Ketave Namaha Honoring the Great Ones Lord Krishna Goddess Sarswati Veda Vyasa and the Holy Tradition going back to Brahmananda Saraswati, um, honoring all my great teachers, um, welcoming um, our classmates. We have nine people in the class. We have a couple of new people. There's some people that aren't here yet. Laura's not here yet. Um, Julie's not here yet. Catherine's not. Catherine's here. Um, Harvest is in Denmark. Um, Nicole's here. Um, Judy's not here. Um, office here. Claudia Richley is, is is new. I think I have the right picture, Claudia. Let me unmute you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Anyway, I think this is good, Claudia. Was this the picture you sent me a couple years ago? Is that one still correct? Yep, yeah, that's still good. Still look the same. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, good to have you with us. Um, Jessica is here from California. I don't have a picture, Jessica. If you want to send me a picture, you can. I'll, I'll put it into the opening slides for the future. Okay. So um, next week we're also going to meet at 11 a.m. Central Time. We have people on all kinds of different time zones. We have a lot of people in California. We have people in London and Denmark, and and so I have to kind of juggle that and also my my other schedule. So um, we will be meeting tomorrow. Uh, next week again at 11 a.m. and next week we are doing um, spiritual practice and deities in Vedic astrology. So we'll be looking at the D20 chart and the D5 chart and the Ishtadevatas and and how you look at spiritual practice from the fifth house um, in in um, uh, the chart. And then the fourth week um, I did add an extra class. Um, it is on February 1st, um, that will be it. Um, and it's the astrology of moksha and enlightenment, and then a look at um, the moksha houses. So um, that's what's coming up. Um, the Vedic Remedies class with Pandit Samavedala and Andrew Foss and myself starts um, at 3 p.m. Pacific time on Saturday, February 15th. And the focus is on, you know, kind of mantras and remedies for finance, relationship, health, and career. It's a five-week class. Um, and I'll be sending out more material on that. My Dasha class, uh, which is now divided into two, two parts, um, has a free preview class Saturday uh, at 3.30 p.m. Central Time. Um, so the first class, some of you have signed up for that already. The first actual class is next week because the preview class is an overview of the whole class. So um, if you want to sign up for that, um, it's, uh, I'll be sending out material on that. Um, and uh, if you missed the year ahead video, it's available 
to download for 1595. Okay, and, uh, so, sorry for the shameless plugs. Um, I'm gonna um, unmute you in a second. Um, okay, let me unmute you all. Um, so Afi, I unmuted you already. Catherine, I just unmuted you. Claudia, I think I had muted, unmuted you already. Jessica, uh, um, I'm unmuting you. I don't know if you know how the webinar works. I think you probably do. You just have to turn your green mic orange so that you don't have any sound in the background bleeding into the tape. Um, Laura, I'm not seeing a mic here. Um, Nicole, I have you registered as a panelist so that I think you can just unmute yourself at any time just because you lost before. Okay, so um, so let me begin. This is I have a third edition of the slideshow. Um, uh, there's enough material here for a four-week class, and it's this is kind of an introduction to it. It's, it's kind of something to think about it. We really sometime will have to do a four-week class on it because it's quite quite an exhaustive topic like everything. The more you know, the more you don't know. Um, let me see if I can enlarge the slideshow view. Laura, can you hear that? Okay, so I, I can I can make it a little bit larger, but I, I like this size actually. Okay, um, you know, I have to acknowledge all kinds of people, particularly, I, I've done a lot of work studying chakras with Master Code Chak Sui and Chloe Watts, and a lot of material um, is connected to stuff that I've studied when connecting to the astrology has been kind of more kind of an original exercise. That's why I said it's kind of work in progress. I, I've been kind of thinking about this for about 15 years Connecting chakras to the planets um, and the signs and the zodiac. Um, you know, it's like anything in Vedic astrology, it's kind of an exhaustive topic. Um, and if you do research on it, you just won't find a lot of satisfying material on it. And I've been thinking about it for about five years now, and I finally kind of put this into this. Lesson. So it's still work in progress. Um, I can you know, continue to do definitive research. And it's particularly difficult because chakras are dealing with subtle energies and subtle bodies. And um, it's not something you can always kind of concretely um, you know, test, although you can to some degree. But healing information um, that we're kind of dealing with. Um, and I'm also thinking, you know, some of you, for those of you who do know about chakras, it's kind of like, I'm just thinking this is like a graduate seminar where I'm hoping you, I can get your contributions and ideas based on your knowledge. Different systems of when people, you know, from the research I have done, uh, Sri Yudhiswar and the Holy Science um, talks about the signs, um, you know, in uh, the chakras. And so he connects, um, Um, the crown chakra would to, you know, after that connects to the beyond, to the transcendental realm, to the divine. Um, and it doesn't really have any signs of the zodiac connected to it because it, it, it's connected to K2, really. It's, it's like the beyond. It's the transcendental nature of, of, of the meditation. Um, the, um, the third eye called the Ajna chakra, which is located between the eyebrows, he, he connects it to Cancer and Leo, which would then connect it to Sun and Moon. Um, I have to turn off my phone here. Um, the Sudhi Chakra, which is the throat chakra, um, is connected to Gemini Virgo, and that would then be to Mercury. Um, the, the Ananda Chakra, which is called the heart chakra, is connected to Venus. Um, according to his system, and then Taurus and Libra, and the Manic Pornish Chakra, or the solar plexus located under the rib cage, this is connected to Mars, Aries, and Scorpio, and um, the Swadhyasthana Chakra, connected to Jupiter, which is connected to Pisces and Sagittarius, um, is the name. Um, 
um, the second chakra or the navel chakra differentiations here as, and then the muladhara chakra is pretty is pretty definitive um as the root chakra connected to capricorn and aquarius so um now uh when you when you study um again i've been studying a lot of this stuff for years and, and one has to kind of look at it um in a deeper level um so if we look at it, if we look at the zodiac as the body, you know, we've, if you looked at the second part of our slide presentation, which I will not present, it was just kind of appendix material. Um, the energy um, in the root chakra flows up into Aquarius, into the front of the root chakra, and then it flows up into Pisces, which is the back of the second chakra, um, and then into Aries, the front of the third chakra. Again, we've got that spiral Kundalini energy going up. So it goes up into Aries, which is the front, the front of the third chakra, and goes into the back of the heart chakra, which is Taurus, to the front of the throat chakra, which is Gemini, back up to the third eye, which is the moon and Cancer, into the front of the third eye, which is the sun and Leo, and down into the throat uh, chakra, back into Virgo, and the back of the throat. Uh, back into the heart, the back of the heart chakra, Leo, and the front of the second chakra, which is Sagittarius, and the back of the base chakra, back to Capricorn. Now, again, this is one theory, and I'm just I'm presenting this because I think you know we we you know trying to come up with a definitive answer. I mean, I I I like this 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 um, way of looking at it, but this is again, it's it's much more complicated. Um, so um, the way the way chakra chakras work you know chakras are energy centers um again they're they're not physical places bodies they're subtle bodies on the energy that's flowing through the system um so if the signs in your natal chart have strong well-placed owners and good plants then the chakras work well and then bad aspects may kind of alter them and cause the chakras to be kind of misaligned or to not work well. So basically, um, um, we can look at the, the the signs of the zodiac as representing the chakras and the flow of energy through the body, through the cosmic body. And then when they are afflicted, um, they they work well. Uh, they they you know they mean those chakras may not work well. And so you can think of it this way: you now Saturn very clearly connected to the base chakra, survival, um, uh, interest in life. Um, and um, you can get you can get bad transits through the chakras. Um, so okay, I, I have this I have this kind of a little bit more detailed here. Um, so the live in your your natal chakras in a, in a good or positive way. Let me just skip the rest of this because I have it better. I, last week I talked about the radio tube analogy. Um, you know, we're born, um, and again, you know, for those of you who are older, you know, we used to have radio tubes in our TVs and, and before we had transistors and then we had, now we have everything as chips now, but you can either use bad radio tubes, bad chips, bad transistors. It's all kind of the same idea. Sometimes you buy um, a cheap, computer and it's got a bad chip in it um and that we're so that's like if you're born with saturn in aries your your saturn chip doesn't work very well and when saturn goes um so it's almost always weak and anytime you're trying to deal with saturn issues it just they never quite function even if saturn is strong in transit in in libra but if you have a strong chip because you spent four thousand dollars for a high class computer let's say your saturn chip is exalted in libra you know even when Saturn is weak in transit in Aries or not doing well, your, your Saturn chip still works. So uh, we can think of our planetary placements like that in our chart. Do we have good chips or bad chips, good tubes or bad tubes? And then, you know, they're affected by transits and, and doshas that we run. So um, if you were born with Saturn in Aries, uh, then the tube's not working very well. It's only got 25%. Uh, ability to function. Um, your base chakra doesn't work very well. You deal with survival issues a lot. You have trouble manifesting money. You live in fear no more because the energy is just not grounding you. If you're born with a, an exalted Libra Saturn tube, 
then you know you're 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 grounded. Your your Saturn is strong. Um, you can you know you're able to manifest money easily, um, and and your base chakra energies work. And we'll talk about what all that means. So when when Saturn is weak, you know the darker qualities come out. Your base chakra isn't working very well. You get you have trouble with depression and survival and things like that. Um, now everything in astrology is is complicated. Um, so we can say to physical chakras and their structures, um, but uh, planets in the signs will give them strength or weakness. So for example, um, if you have Venus in Capricorn, which is a friend sign, it, it strengthens the, the base chakra. I have Saturn in Capricorn. I have a very strong base chakra because I've done a lot of chakra work and, and I've measured my chakras. And so you can see, I can see that with Saturn in, um, if you, you know, you, you have a, 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 a you put Rahu or another malefic inflict and, and, you know, make that chakra not work as well. And we'll have some thoughts around that. So um, I'm also starting to think, and I added a new slide about Karka values. Um, you know, when we learn Vedic astrology, we learn that every house is connected to a Karka. So the, for example, the third house, um, which has a lot to do with um, protecting your boundaries and primal sexual energy. Um, most people talk about it as communication, but it's really it's a really superficial way of talking about it. It's really about the primal mind. And the karka for the third house is Mars. And Mars is, um, you know, is about will. And we think we can, so can we, we connect the third house to the solar plexus and the expression of wills. When, when, when your third house isn't you know, is afflicted, uh, probably there's a negative impact on your solar plexus and your ability to manifest in the world or it manifests in a darker way. So it's just another kind of way of looking at things. Now, um, I can't, I can't, I won't do too much with nakshatra, a nakshatra connection to the chakras also. And, um, and, and, and it's often, um, I, I've discovered it in books on relationship compatibility, and they'll talk about how if people, um, it's, it, there's a concept called Rajus, and um, and we'll look at that at the end of the slideshow. I don't know if we'll even get to it, but um, uh, nakshatras affect the mental level, and nakshatras are often used for compatibility, and so they do affect relationship energy. So if you don't connect with your partner chakras um, because of certain planetary combinations, um, and nakshatra combinations, then your relationship doesn't work. And that's, it's really kind of fascinating. But I'm just, what I wanted to say, it's, you know, it's very complex. This is why, like I said, we could have five or six lessons on this. Um, and this is like my survey overview. Someday we'll do more. Um, now, you know, we also can think what, when chakras get afflicted, sometimes they, they don't spin properly. They get tilted. They get depleted quickly. We could think like retrograde planets probably kind of mess up our chakra spins, you know. Um, and um, again, when I, because I have done a lot of work with chakras and I can measure them and I've done healing work with them, you can see, you know, when people have certain kind of planetary afflictions, you can see how certain of their chakras aren't working. And the whole purpose of this is ultimately to add a, a new dimension, um, let me get um, to understanding um, our cosmic body um and um and that goes back to the color purusha to the way you know the planets you know the we are we are the universe we, we are the zodiac the planets are moving through us the energies are creating spins and karmas and things like that and last week we, we went through astro yoga which was um the idea of like doing certain yoga postures to heal the chakras and so i just i realized that we need to do a little bit more about chakras because then you'll kind of see how you can use yoga to kind of correct planetary problems again so this is all about kind of multidimensionality in terms of healing and understanding how astrology connects to the body connects to the subtle bodies and how the energy flows when there are blocks in the planets they affect the subtle planets they, they, they affect the subtle bodies 
And then when the subtle bodies are afflicted, then certain things don't manifest in our life and we have challenges. And so you can kind of, it's just another way of looking at this stuff. And it's only because I had spent so, taken so many classes on chakras that I've kind of really just been fascinated by it. Um, okay, Judy, I'm gonna unmute you so you can mute yourself. And Julie, also you're here and I'm just gonna unmute you also. Okay. so. Um, so this is kind of my overview, and, and all this stuff is kind of, um, I'm going to put the cookbook here at the beginning, um, just kind of it's an overview of what, how we kind of look at chakras in astrology and how we can diagnose them, and then we'll have to come back to it. I just wanted to give you this cookbook first. So we said the signs of the zodiac are the chakras, so Capricorn, Aquarius or the base chakra, that kind of thing. So you can, we just went through that. Uh, do the chakras function well because there are positive planets in them or there are malefics in them? So, you know, as soon as you have, like you put Venus in Capricorn, it's in a friend sign. Venus does support the base chakra and you can understand that. And so, you know, that's kind of a positive way of looking at it. You put Mars in um, Cancer, um, it, it kind of afflicts the, the, the third eye and creates too much kind of energy and anger in that center. Um, so you can kind of, you know, you can kind of play with um, exalted and debilitated planets and see how that works. Um, so uh, the chakra, if the chakras are connected to the signs, is the, you know, so again, everything in Vedic astrology we study is, is their dignity. If the, if the, if the owner of the chakra is exalted, or in its own sign, then that chakra functions well. If the owner of that chakra is weak, then that chakra doesn't function well. If there are at bad aspects to that, then the the it may be or to the owner, then it's afflicted. That this is kind of basic astrology. Um, what aspects are there to the chakra houses? So again, we have we have to use both types of aspects, but you know aspects. Um, we'll color, you know, whether our radio tubes are working or whether they're not. Um, so, th so then we have to look at do the positive or negative qualities of the chakra manifest. And you can kind of tell this is a lot of material in, in, in this about the chakras. You can we'll probably Wadsworth and things like that. And you can see when this chakra isn't, when, even even though if you can't, most of us don't know how to look at chakras, but you can tell about what's manifesting in somebody's life, and then you can see how that's it's working. Um, do the positive or negative qualities of the health issues manifest? So this is just all, you know, I've always been interested in kind of multi-dimensional level of it. Um, and obviously there are other things, you know, obviously we have to look at, um, um, we'll have to look at the house influences, which is still work in progress for me, and then um, we talked about how yoga postures could be used to kind of strengthen the, the chakras. There are mantras for each of the chakras to do also. I mean, this is my kind of overview. Um, okay, so um, I that was that was my introduction, and that took about 20 minutes. Um, again, this is. Um, I. Okay, so we're still having tr trouble with the internet. I'm so sorry. Um, are, are, are other people... <sighs> I, I can switch to my other computer, but then I have the slideshow on this computer, and I have your charts on this computer. So um, I, I, I can switch to um, the other computer, and I think the other computer does not have as many problems with the sound. Um, and I can't do anything about the, um, okay, let me get a, um, okay, so you got, so here's what we can do, because the really sound quality is important. Um, I may, I may switch to my other computer, um, um, is I'll have to keep the slides. You'll have to, I won't be able to, to, oh, I may be able to get the slides up. Um, 
so if I if I switch computers, it's going to take you know some time for me to kind of download and upload. Let me ask: Is anybody signs Affy? Julie, is the sound okay? It's okay, but it's it's just a little distracting because your your voice freezes up pretty regularly. My voice, my voice freezes up. Yes, it, everything just free. Everything freezes for three or four seconds, and then your conversation continues. And then it freezes up again. Okay. So what I can't. Okay. So what I can do um, is I can run the class from hotspot, um, and because I'm I'm so I'm trying to diagnose whether. So um, so what that I'm gonna uh, you can stay on you can all stay online. I'm gonna have to kind of. Um, um, switch the internet to hotspot, and then it may require me to go back to, to go to webinar and sign on again. But you can you can stay on. So you so um, I, I've done that one time before. We've had to run the class from hotspot. Um, we, we've had the internet people over here forever, and, and they never quite fix it. Okay, let's see. So it's going to take me a minute or two, but that's going to be the best solution. Um, okay. Let's see if I can find hotspot. I have a new phone, so I've got to um, search for. I'm, I'm sorry, I I I, um, I couldn't. It is better because of the ice storm. So do you have? Does anybody want to share anything while uh, I'm setting this up? It's going to take me um, a few minutes. Any other interest in chakras? Um, could do tethering, but I don't know how to do that. Hmm. Okay. I, okay. So I'm going to have to kind of buy it and so that's going to be going to have to log off. So again, all of you just stay on because I'm just going to log off and come back on again. So I'm going to end the webinar, uh, which is not what I want to do because it messes up the videotape, but I don't have a choice. Let me see if I can just switch it. Okay, it did switch to, huh. okay, it looks like I did was able to get on mobile hotspot. So let me, um, um, I am running on mobile hotspot now, so let me know how's the sound now, Laura. 
Is it, is it going in and out? We'll have to wait for a minute to see. Okay, so keep, you keep me posted. I, it's interesting, I was able to kind of switch it. Um, I'm surprised that I was able to switch it while I was in the middle of it. Let me see if it's still recording. Well, you're still you're still all there, so I'm, I'm assuming it just kind of it's interesting. Technology has changed. Okay, so um, now there are different systems of chakras. At the beginning of the presentation, I you know there's there's seven major chakras. Um, if you study with most of the chakra teachers, there are a lot of other chakras, and some of them are actually more are also major enough that they shouldn't be ignored. Um, some people talk about five chakras and connect them to the five elements. I don't like that system. Um, Master Choa, who I studied chakras with, really talked about 11 major chakras. I, I tend to go with those because I've just worked with them physically and, um, and, and you know, etherically. Um, and then there are you know, you know, some other ways of looking at these things. But um, I'm going to present this, this, this. So, because to me, there's always been a problem because there are multiple. Um, there, it, it's not as cut and dry. So let me talk about. So the base chakra, no, no qualms about it. Saturn, Capricorn, very, very, very clear. This now the we talked last week. We talked about the sex chakra, which is located. Uh, um, in the sacrum area, in the pubic area, and it's very different from the navel chakra, which is located um, in the back of, uh, you know, over the navel. And those are two separate ch chakras, and they have to be talked about that way. Um, the sex chakra is very connected to Venus and Taurus and Libra, and obviously, but reproduction is also connected to Jupiter and creativity. And to me, um, and so there are a number of teachers that talk about the navel chakra. Um, so the sex chakra and the navel chakra in some systems kind of come together, but it, it's, it's Venus and Jupiter. But I, I tend to like to separate the navel chakra into being Jupiter, which is the place where the belly gets big, where we have generosity or we hold on to things and we have greed and we get heavy. The sex chakra, you know, is obviously a center of creativity, artistic creativity or procreativity. So I differentiate the two of them. There are minor chakras, the back spleen chakra, connected to Saturn um, because Saturn governs the spleen. Um, we're not going to talk about it very much. The solar plexus is obviously located under the rib cage. It's connected to um, Mars and the sun very clearly. Um, and and, and sign-wise, it's connected to Aries and Scorpio. Um, and there's no kind of doubt about the solar plexus. You can't ignore it. Laura, how's the sound? Is it better? Okay, is anybody there? Okay, um, hi, Barry. Still here. Yeah, how's the sound? Is it better? Yeah, I think it's good now. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, Laura, how's the sound? Affie, how's the sound? Let me unmute you. Affie, how's the sound? You had problems? Um, yeah, the sounds that uh, seems good right now. Okay, okay, That's so I'm, I'm using my hotspot. I'm using my blog mic. So um, we just have to do that when we have bad weather. Okay. Um, okay, so let's continue. So now we'll just assume we have no technology problems. Claudia um, had a quick question. Um, okay. okay, Claudia says it's much better. Okay, so we solved the technology problems. Yay, Rahu. Okay, great. So um, the solar plexus, again, very clearly connected to Mars and the sun. It's under the rib cage. The heart chakra, um, you know, traditionally it's connected to Taurus and Libra. And we think of Venus and love. But um, I have problems with the heart chakra just being connected to Venus. Um, it's also connected to the moon. Um, and, and I kind of personally feel there's a lot of other energies going through there, but, um, and then the throat chakra, which is 
and obviously over in the throat is is connect is everybody says it's connected to Mercury and to Virgo and Gemini. I I as I said last week, I really think Jupiter is an important part of the throat chakra, um, and and I've kind of added that the Ajna chakra is 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 the third eye. It's located between the eyebrows, and a lot of and I'm last week I talked about it a little bit being Mars energy because um, it's center for will and I. I am doing a lot more research and really thinking about it more deeply. Um, it's very connected to Cancer and Leo in terms of the signs of the zodiac, um, and is and that definitely connects it to Sun Moon. And if you think about pranayamas, the top of the when we do pranayamas, if you all know alternate nostril pranayamas, it's very connected to you know starting. Your pranayamas, you know, alternating between the two nostrils. It's very, it connects you to the third eye automatically. So, uh, we talked about last week how the uh, the, um, the the solar and lunar energies runs up the whole spine and kind of kind of centers in the ajna chakra. And and um, I'm kind of more definitively feeling um, better about that. And I think when anger comes up in the ajna chakra, which is a seat of anger, it's solar energy. I, I, for the longest time, I was thinking, okay, it's Mars, it's the seat of will, but it's solar energy when we get angry and, and blocked in the in the third eye, and we do get angry in the third eye for sure. Um, now, the brow chakra, this is where we get this differentiation. The brow chakra is a, is the, in the forehead, and so most people just talk about the third eye. Um, um, Master Choa talks about the forehead chakra, which is the brow chakra, which is definitely connected to moon and the cancer. It's the place of higher wisdom. It's the queen and, and stuff. And then the crown chakra, which I last week connected to the sun, is, you know, the sun is the divine energy, but it's also K2. And I was, um, you know, realizing, you know, K2 is the seat of meditation. And it's very interesting. K2 is also at the base of the spine. And I'll talk about that in a minute because K2... It is connected to Ganesh and the trunk of Ganesh, you know, which was a mythological emblem of Ketu is very connected to the spine and the seat of the spine is, you know, where Ketu and Ganesh are located at the seat of the spine. A lot of yoga practices, you know, um, are centered at the seat of the spine. It's because the Ketu energy starts there and it goes up and out the crown chakra, you know, into deep meditation into the divine. So, um, this is my kind of refinement, but I think it's a lot of people talk about seven chakras. Um, you you have to kind of uh, the big difference is that you have to look at the, uh, the separate uh, create the sex chakra and the navel chakra is maybe two two parts of the second chakra, and that the uh, ajna chakra, which is really kind of two chakras, um, because it's the forehead chakra and the ajna chakra, and so that's. Um, and then there are a lot of other kind of minor chakras, but I, we're not going to go into those in this class. Okay, so that's that. Now, chakras and planets. Um, now, it's interesting because when you look at the places of exaltation of the planets, it also kind of helps you understand how the energies are reacting with the chakra. Now, Mars exalts in Capricorn in the root chakra because it's, you know, and Mars is like I am. It's, you know, it's just, you know, that the ego aspect, you know, it's who and Mars gives us drive and motivation when we're clearly grounded in our own reality and accept our past. So there's nothing holding us back and we're living fully in the present moment. So Mars, you know, Mars exalts in Capricorn because it grounds us and it does really well in Capricorn because, you know, it just, it, it, it you know, connects us to kind of a, uh, Capricorn again is 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 the business sign of the zodiac. It's the base chakra. If we have a weak Capricorn or if we have a weak Saturn, then our ability to manifest money, um, our survival energy, um, our fear levels are challenged. But when Mars is exalted in Capricorn, you see why now. It, it's like giving us the courage to go into the world and create great things. And when you see people Mars and in Capricorn, I mean, they're very good at, particularly the Nishtha Nakshantra, they're very good at manifesting money, um, and um, they're very successful usually. And again, we can't say that totally for everybody, but again, some Mars connects exalts in the crown, in the in the in the base chakra. Um, and now, you could have an agitated Mars in Capricorn, 
in which case, you know, the darker qualities might come out. And again, this is why we always, you know, we could have a lot of negative aspects to 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 Mars and Capricorn, and you know, and then the darker aspects of guilt, shame, fear, insecurity, and frustration would come out. Um, Venus. So Venus, we said, was very connected to the second chakra, and the key message is, I feel Venus is the planet of worldly pleasures. Uh, when we're balanced, we feel free to enjoy the pleasures of life and and you know the world spontaneously. Venus is the sex center. Obviously, we enjoy sexual and creative energy. We talked about last week that. But when the energy is going up, it's creative energy for artistic creativity. When the energy is going down, which is not bad, it's you know it's for producing babies. It's procreativity. Um, when when um, and so Venus, you know, the world has this whole problem with an overactive Venus. Um, Venus, if you've heard my lecture on addiction, it's very connected to addict all kinds of addiction, um, and including sexual addiction. So um, it's a lower energy, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's, it makes it, it's it's very important but um when it's not flowing right it gets afflicted um you know the sun relates to our solar plexus also mars um again the solar plexus is all about i do it's it's about moving our will forward it's about power it's about moving forward with energy and vitality so when we have a strong mars and a strong sun when aries and um libra uh, and 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 scorpio are particularly strong and have good aspects to them then we're confident, optimistic, we can digest life, we can move forward fully, we can create and manifest uh, our existence. Um, when, when the sun and Mars and the solar plexus and, and Aries and, and Scorpio are afflicted, then we get, um, you know, we get um, imbalances in ego. We you know the problems with the sun and Mars are always like, um, you know, boastful ego, or too, you know, problems with ego, and 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 people always dislike them. Um, you know, the moon is, is I, I like to say it's related to the chakra, the heart chakra, and also to Venus. Again, moon exalts in Taurus, and we said Taurus is the seat of um, of Venus, and the second um, Venus is the seat of the second chakra, actually, the heart chakra, actually, um, and. Um, so moon exalts in Venus. So that's why I think, you know, I, I can't really separate the moon from the heart chakra. And then it's also thought that our higher, that the energy from the brow chakra, uh, higher wisdom kind of flows into the heart chakra um, and uh, creates this kind of intuition. And if those of you know about intuition, it often comes from that feeling level in the heart. And so there has to be a connection between the brow chakra and the heart chakra. And that's why I think the moon's very important there. So when the moon is strong when it's exalted in Taurus, and we have strong intuition, we have strong ability to love. And you know, Moon and Venus are this, um, Venus doesn't really like the Moon, but Moon likes Venus. Um, and you know, they're a, they're a Raj Yoga and Jaimini astrology for producing money. Uh, but um, Moon and Venus, I think, you know, are very connected for obviously love and nurturing and in the heart chakra and very kind of basic. Um, Mercury relates to the fifth chakra of communication and our expression. I speak when we when we can honestly speak freely and our, we and we express our creativity. Our our Mercury is balanced and working again. That comes out through Gemini, um, out um, uh, in the positive realm. And I think Jupiter, um, from all the people that I've studied, Jupiter seems to be very important in the throat chakra too. It's a kind of a higher energy. Uh, speaking wisdom, you know, uh, is very important. Uh, gratitude comes out of the throat when we, when we choke up in grief. Um, Jupiter is kind of afflicted there in the throat chakra. Um, the third eye um, again is Sun and the Moon, Cancer and Leo. Um, I I was thinking I'm going to kind of get rid of this idea of, of w expression of will. I always think of the warrior energy is connected to the third eye, and, and it is, but I think it's more the sun warrior energy. Um, and when it's afflicted, we get anger in the third eye, and that's why we get anger in the third eye, which is very important. And then we get intuition in the brow chakra, as I was explaining. Um, and then K2 kind of relates to the crown chakra and also to the sun, the divine sun energy kind of pours through the crown chakra. and K2, when the energy is going up fully from the base of the shine, where K2 begins with the trunk of Ganesh, to the base of this, to the crown chakra on top, then the energy merges with the divine. 
and 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 so K2 kind of runs through the whole system on that level. Um, okay. So um, sound is still good, Effie. Yes. Okay, good. So we solved the problem. The problem is, again, it was you know okay. I, I'm so uh, if I have to work from home because of the ice, we're going to have to use our mobile hotspot. Okay. Um, so here, here's another way of looking at this material. You know, the root chakra is about our primal needs in life, survival, food, and shelter. That's Saturn. You know, when Saturn's strong, you know, we manifest money. We we have a strong ability to find create a roof over our head. When you find people with weak Saturn, Saturn in Aries, um, um, even Saturn in Scorpio is not so great. Um, you 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 find that that they have problems with um, existence and survival, and so again, and this is you know this is because you want you know you want Saturn and Capricorn, which everybody is going to have now in transit. You want Saturn and Libra, and there are other places that we really like Saturn, um, Taurus, of course, um, but we don't want Saturn in Aries or Scorpio, particularly um, where it's going to be much more problematic. Um, So we can unfold the root chakra by staying grounded, by living simply, working through our fears of poverty, structure rules, and obligations. Again, so I always tell you the rule of the, the remedy for Saturn is meditation, um, yoga, and exercise. Saturn does really well. It wants routine. It wants uh, regularity and living. It wants to stay grounded. It wants us to be in our body. And, and I find I live in a community where a lot of people um, have been meditating for 40 years and they have very developed higher chakras, but their, their base chakra doesn't work very well and they can't keep money in the bank. They can't make money. They're living on the edge. And so a lot of my teachers have always recommended that we have to build, um, there's nothing wrong with Saturn or our base chakra because if we don't have a solid infrastructure financially, then we can't support the higher chakras and move forward. Um, the second chakra, um, sometimes called the water chakra, because um, Venus is a water planet. You know, I think you know Venus and Jupiter are here. And again, I separated it into navel and um, and sex chakra because they're most people just lump that together as the second chakra, but they're really kind of two separate energies. And again, it's a place where we produce children through pro pro creativity. What is Jupiter? Jupiter's children. Um, it, it's a place of creativity. Um, it's it's um, it's a place of uh, moving out of our survival needs and into creative energy. Again, if you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know the core level, which is the base chakra, is Saturn. It's it's um, survival, and then once we move into the second chakra, it's it's creativity and procreativity, um, and it's very kind of basic energy. Um, so both Venus and Jupiter are highly benefic planets, and um, their doshas periods always create a lot of abundance and generosity. And you know, um, but when the when the when those when the signs um, and the planets connected to the base chakra uh, to the second chakra are afflicted, then we get too much pleasure. We get sexual addiction. We get uh, inability to use discipline um, in our emotional urges, and and it, it creates kind of problems in our life. I mean. Third chakra, Mars, um, called the Manipurna chakra. Um, the fire element, of course, is here. I, I think, you know, obviously we can't ignore the sun here. Um, um, this, you know, this, the sun obviously is very important in the solar plexus, as is Mars. It's a planet of action uh, and danger and strength. And again, it's it's where we kind of move forward and show our independence and fearlessness and, and take risks to exert our power. Um, Fourth chakra, the Ananta chakra, um, again, it's a water chakra um, connected to Venus and Moon, um, again, where we harness our ability to love and it's a place of feeling, of nurturing, and all those things. And we know all these things, compassion, empathy, uh, forgiveness. Uh, fifth chakra, um, the air element is present there, connected to Mercury, um, and the ether element to Jupiter. 
Um, again, I said I think I I I'm, I definitely feel like Mercury and Jupiter are very connected to the to that area. That's a place where we to the thyroid gland, to respiratory system, to the larynx, uh, where we communicate issues and put things into words, um, where we have to speak up and we express truth. Again, Mercury, you know, Mercury and Jupiter are the sophic planets because they're about, and they're both connected to knowledge. Mercury, maybe to lower knowledge and Jupiter to higher wisdom. But, but ultimately we want to move Mercury toward Jupiter, toward the higher wisdom and expressing higher wisdom in life not getting caught up in gossip, which is what happens with Gemini sometimes when it's afflicted. When Mercury is afflicted, it likes to gossip. Um, the sixth chakra, the Ajna chakra is again connected to the sun and the moon, Cancer and Leo. It's a command center for the inner eye. We do pranayama. Um, it balances out the pineal gland, the pituitary gland. It, you know, it, it connects us to the higher brain. So the sun and the moon are very connected to the higher brain. Um, And again, it, it allows us to, 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 for, you know, the sun allows us vision and clarity to, to discern and to perceive. It's like four degrees here today. It's like, I have to put on my booties to stay warm. When we focus on the Ajna Chakra, we have discernment and clarity and perception. In the, in the world and, and moving up into the higher realms of spirituality. Uh, the seven chakra, um, thousand petal lotus, um, like I said, it's, I, I always like to connect it to the sun, which is why last week we learned the, um, the, the tree pose, which I think is like opening up the energy from the sun to let it in. But it's also K2 because ultimately it's through meditation and K2 that we let in the divine energy and, and can transcend the world and all the chakras and all the craziness. Um, okay. Chakras and signs. Again, we talked about this a little bit. I'm trying to give you these basics and it gets kind of complicated. Uh, so Capricorn governs our stability to move forth in life. Aquarius is, is the expression of that also. It's in the Muladhara chakra. Pisces governs creative energy and Sagittarius this is the manifestation of that. Um, I'm going to skip the system. I just, I'm not really happy with um, this. Now, um, I'm kind of, I'm still working on houses because I think, you know, when we learn Vedic astrology, if your area is rising, then your houses and your signs kind of go together. You don't have to, you can always kind of put them together. But, you know, when you're not areas rising, we always have to kind of bring in, in houses. And there are, um, um, I'm still kind of, uh, I, I have some better ideas how to integrate houses and chakras. Um, I, the, the slides that I sent you, I, I'm not sure um, I found them in my research. I'm not sure I'm really happy with them. I developed a new set this morning um, when I was thinking about it more deeply. Um, when I put it up here, this is the new slide in the third edition, Karakas, Houses and Chakras. So um, the first, you know, what I, what I was realizing, you know, when you learn uh, Vedic astrology, you memorize the Karakas for the houses. We did that in the Secret of the Houses class. So we know this, the Karaka is kind of the core value of that house. Um, and we always have to remember to look at the Karakas and the core value. So the, to me, the core value of the first house um, it's, is, is, it's this, it, you know, the karaka for the first house is the sun. So to me, that's kind of like the crown chakra, you know, um, and sun exalts in Aries in the first house to build it in the seventh house where we get too kind of much sexual energy. So you don't want sun in Libra or sun in the seventh house. Sun also represents sunset. Um, and so you can kind of see how sun is the karaka for the first house. It needs, um, and, and when it's, you know, when you pe meet people with, with um, Sun and Aries, I mean, they have just really, they're very connected to the divine. They're very connected to their crown chakra. You know, they just kind of radiate a lot of being. A lot of, I think, ascended masters have that. So I think, I feel like when the sun's exalted and when the crown chakra is, is fully blossoming, we get this strong kind of first house energy, which is where we need to go. Um, the second house, Karka, is Jupiter. We're connected to the navel chakra, um, 
And again, Jupiter exalts in Cancer, which is exalts in the heart. Cancer, is, well, put it this way: no, Jupiter doesn't exalt in the heart area. Jupiter exalts in the in the in the brow chakra. Remember, we said the brow chakra is connected to the sign of Cancer, um, and it's kind of our higher intuition. It's you know, it's the queen. You know, the sun is the king. It's the crown chakra. The moon is the queen, it's the brown chakra, it's our higher intuition. Jupiter exalts in Cancer in the brow chakra and it debilitates in the root chakra. Now, doesn't Jupiter in, in, in Capricorn is not bad, it's good for business, it's good for um, manifesting money, it loses its ethical value there. Jupiter always has to be ethical and in Capricorn it gets pulled down by Saturn. Jupiter exalts in um, so in, in Capricorn, it loses its um, its wisdom. It, it gets caught up in material things. It will manifest money. Jupiter is good in Capricorn for manifesting money. Again, it's a benefic in in the in the in the base chakra. So it's Jupiter, and people get this wrong. Uh, debilitated Jupiter doesn't. It's actually Jupiter is always good. It's good for manifesting money in Capricorn, but it's not good for its 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 archetypal value, which is wisdom. Um, the third house, the carcass for the third house is Mars. Um, Mars is the solar plexus. And, um, you know, the problem when Mars gets afflicted is, you know, people with a strong will, they get violent, they get sexually predatory. Um, and that's the problem with, actually, you don't really want Mars in the third house, even though it's the carcass for the third house, you don't want it there. Mars exalts in the base chakra, but it debilitates in the heart chakra. So it's 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 kind of... Um, um, I mean, sorry, it debilitates in in the brow chakra. I, I just had that kind of change here. I'm sorry. So when we get angry, you know, when Mars is afflicted, you know, we get these headaches and we get this anger in our head, and that's because it's kind of it's kind of like Mars is out of balance there. Fourth house is 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 the carcass for the fourth house is the moon, the heart chakra. The moon exalts in Taurus. Um, anyway, some of this is, is I, I don't want to get too complicated with this, but I just wanted to show you um, there's a connection between where planets exalt and the chakras. And um, I need to kind of flesh this out in a, in a long article that will probably take me two or three hours to write. I was just cognizing this this morning, um, but I wanted you to, what I realized is that, that the house has really tell us the most about um the chakras and and the expression you know um and even the 12th house um, which is the place of moksha it's you know the highest realm of saturn is to kind of take away everything and to bring us to moksha and saturn is a very spiritual planet in that respect um and in a sense um i was kind of thinking about i was thinking about jupiter in the 11th house group soul activity and things like that but anyway still kind of i said i at the beginning of the lesson i said we have some work in progress on on this, um, some of it is, is is very clear, and some of it is 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 still work in progress. Um, you know, there's two. The sun and the moon are the two petals of the third eye center, and that's why they activate the male and female energies that flow through our nostrils through the Ida and Pingala energy. So, um, all these, um, if you study yoga, you, you learn about the the solar and the lunar energies moving up and down the chakras. And sometimes we have too much solar energy, sometimes we have too much lunar energy, and that's because the sun and the moon, Cancer and Leo, are located in the Ajna center. And we do pranayamas to kind of balance those out. And, um, and Cancer and Leo show the two centers of emotion and reason. Um, so there are different kind of, I, um, actually, I, I don't want to, I've got some more information on houses here. I, I'm not going to do houses because it's pretty complicated. We went through this already. I want to talk a little bit more about chakras. I also want to take a break. This is very abstract. And this is, um, I don't want to lose anybody. And so I want to take um, questions here. Are you finding this interesting to kind of think about it this way? Um, do you have any questions or comments? I think most of you are unmuted. Claudia, I just unmuted you. Jessica, Julie is usually on her cell phone. Nicole. 
Laura disappeared. Um, okay, any questions? Again, as I mentioned, with anything in Vedic astrology, you know, this is the first time you're hearing some of this. You have to go back and listen to it again. You have to think about it and integrate it. So there's a lot of a lot of deep knowledge here. And like I said, this could be a four week class. I'm kind of doing an overview just because I've been wanting to do this for like five years. Okay, any thoughts? Okay. Um, now, for those of you who have studied chakras, um, chakra energies get blocked. And it's kind of like when you get afflicted planets or afflicted signs. Um, and if you people who can clairvoyantly see chakras or feel them, sometimes the spin may slow down. So it's almost like a debilitated planet. Sometimes the, the you know, the energy, the, it's just the planet isn't able to get the chakra to spin fast enough or malefics affect the chakra and they prevent it from spinning fully and then the energy doesn't function. The way this kind of can work, let's say if you, okay, Mars is like um, very connected to the solar plexus and to, to creating energy, it's very connected to the adrenals. And if if um, you have an afflicted Mars in your chart, um, um, maybe Mars is retrograde, maybe Mars is in the sign of cancer, maybe Mars is aspected by Saturn or Rahu or something like that, it kind of distorts um, the third chakra and it, and it distorts your energy level. Your energy may be imbalanced or you may have low energy. I mean, basically people with Mars and Cancer usually suffer from adrenal problems. If you look at, if you measure their third chakra, they're usually kind of, um, it's kind of, kind of smaller or weaker or it's spinning wrong. So um, sometimes chakras can be tipped in one direction and out of balance. Um, sometimes, um, they may be shut down. Now so you get, you get, a, you get times when chakras are shut down and then people like you, I find this even with, um, the base chakra, you know, people are having financial problems. You measure their base chakra. It's just not functioning very well. It's, it's, there's, there's no energy there. And I tell people to do deep, deep, deep knee bends or do the chair pose that increases, um, the base chakra increases the Saturn energy, increases the, the survival energy and moves it more toward manifesting. So, you know, sometimes chakras are shut down when you have, you know, in people that are, have no spirituality, you find that there may be their lower chakras are very developed, you know, um, and lower chakras, you, have to, you know, sometimes they're good about money and forcing themselves and things like that, but they have no, they may not have a, have a heart. They may not be compassionate. Um, they may not, um, be involved in wisdom and they may not be involved in spirituality and their upper chakras are not very developed. And sometimes you get people who meditate all the time and their higher chakras are very developed, but they have problems with their lower chakras. So um, you get these kind of imbalances. Um, now, one of the things that can happen with chakras, which people don't ever teach you, is that chakras, um, chakras can be um, torn. Um, so there are the, there's these protective people who are clairvoyant. They can see this protective web webbing over the chakras, and that that webbing kind of protects the chakra. Um, and what happens is people who drink, do drugs and alcohol uh, and tobacco. So it's like Rahu kind of like a, a can, can really kind of destroy the chakras. When the chakras get destroyed, there's a lot of like mental and astral energy that kind of flows into the mental bodies and disturbs it. So, for example, you know, most people know that people who do a lot of marijuana, they get really paranoid. They get a lot of fear coming up. And that's because um, even drugs like marijuana, uh, which may have medical um, effects and help people with pain and things like that, it does create holes in, in, in the chakras. And then the these kind of lower energies kind of come up and people do these drug trips and they get all these kind of mental uh, mental disturbances it's because the the chakras get um the chakra webs get torn so if you see people with rahu rahu can you know rahu causes mental disturbances on the subtle bodies and so when rahu um if people get involved in drug and alcohol and, and you know, and get involved in negative energies and the chakras get torn, then they're subject to all kinds of mental noise that creates, you know, craziness, you know. And you can see this in people's torrents. 
Um, sometimes um, chakras get depleted and they can't be recharged. And that's kind of like maybe, I mean, people get exhausted. It's like, you know, you put Venus in an enemy sign like Scorpio and people may be very sexual oriented, but then they're, their, their second chakra gets very depleted and they have no energy for creativity or they're, they're tired all the time. You know, if you, if you, um, you know, if you're over sex, you know, there are people that are sex addicts, they have to have sex two or three times a day, or, you know, just, you know, they're always looking at pornography. The energy gets very depleted and they get exhausted. So that can happen too. And then you get, um, sometimes chakras can't, don't, don't flow and vibrate pro properly. Okay. So um, what happens when chakras are blocked? Um, then and you see, you, you can see this, you know, people get weird planet, uh, weird addictions and things like that. Addictions will, um, addictions will come up. So if, 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 if chakras are blocked, then people are, um, um, you know, they, they make, you know, if energy can't flow, again, ideally, you know, energy flows from the base chakra up to the crown chakra and it creates bliss. Now, when the energy, if the energy is blocked um, and it can't, it can't flow up, they're not meditation, they're having too much sex, they're into drugs and they're into addictions, then the energy gets kind of blocked and lower extension, uh, the lower chakras. And then it, and people get impatient, angry and violent. Um, they get uh, into sexual addictions and sexual predatory energies. Um, they'll reject people, they become jittery and fidgety. Ultimately, the remedy is always to get people into yoga and meditation and do pranayamas. You have to get the energies moving up and into spiritual initiation. The energy stays too low in the lower chakras, then they get into excessive talking, workaholism, adrenal rushes, and they, you know, they get, you know, get into problems. Um, so let's look at the crown chakra. Um, some of the stuff... Again, I have, you know, I have over 100 slides here. I'm not going to get through them all, but you can read through them. I was trying to get through the general principles, and then we'll see if we can look at, at some charts and see uh, how we can diagnose chakra problems um, in charts and, um, and, and what we can do about it with healing it. Um, so the crown chakra is connected to the central nervous system, to the pineal gland and the cerebral cortex. Um, and um the um um you know the con the, the crown chakra is where the divine energy comes into the system again um when the crown sometimes you get people that have blocked crown chakras there's no they have a debilitated sun um they have no energy in their head they, they have a weak k2 like k2 and taurus or something like that they're just not connected to their divine energies then what happens is life is uninspiring, confused, disconnected from the divine. There's a lot of suffering. When people aren't connected to the divine. Maybe they're an atheist. Maybe they're separated from the wholeness. Now, they may have a lot of money. Their lower chakras may be very developed, but they have no upper chakra development, and they're disconnected from the divine, and life feels meaningless. And so you can also think of combinations like Sun and Libra, Sun in the 12th house, where it gets really kind of blocked, Sun in the 8th house, Sun in the 7th house. Those are places where you could diagnose maybe there's, there's a lot of weak crown energy and you've got to get them doing like the tree pose that we learned last week in yoga. Um, um, part of um, problems with the crown chakra can lead to exhaustion. Um, when the crown is working really well, we have bliss. We have the bliss in meditation. When the crown's not working well, we just, you know, we're exhausted and we're not connected. Um, crown chakra can be uh, impacted from head injuries, um, from drugs or head traumas. I mean, I, um, my brother, when I was young, younger, pushed me down the stairs into the basement. I fell on my head and they took me to the hospital and it, you know, it damaged my head when you're four and, and, you know, I'm sure it afflicted my crown chakra back then. And it made me all kind of dyslexic, but, um, the cranial bones are very connected to the crown chakra. Sometimes when you have people have uh, crown chakra problems, you need cranial sacral therapies to kind of heal them. Um, when the crown chakra is balanced, you know, and we, we meditate a lot, um, we're connected to our higher self, we're connected to the divine, there's 
there's a desire to want to do selfless service and, to, and for divine wisdom to flow. We're serene and compassionate. Again, you think of sun and Aries. You, know, you always get these great saints with suns and Aries. If it's in the right houses, you know, where they just have just all, all this kind of magnanimous energy. Um, sometimes there are healing energies for the crown chakra can involve, obviously meditation is always the best one. Sometimes amethyst light will help. Um, being in silence will will increase the crown chakra, violet light. There are all kinds of healing modalities. Um, now the astrology of the crown chakra, we said is connected to the sun and K2. Um, and and I, I'm starting to think like Pisces in the, is because it's the, the 12th sign of the zodiac. You know, basically, when we're flowing um, into the natural signs of the zodiac, you know, somehow must be connected to the to the the chakras too. And I'm just I'm starting just to think about this a little bit more. But Pisces is obviously a place for kind of the crown chakra because it's where we connect to the divine. And and Pisces people are very spaced out because they're so connected to to kind of that, that you know they're always in touch to that spiritual divine energy. Um, put Sun in Capricorn or Aquarius again. It's you know, it's too earthy. I mean, Sun in Aquarius is good for business, but it's not good for spirituality. You know, Sun in Aquarius, seven houses away from Leo, it's not very happy. Uh, sun in Taurus maybe, or Libra maybe too sexual. You know, put Sun in the natural second house or the seventh house. You know, two loses its divine energy. The problem with Sun in Libra is just too, too, um, too sexual. Um, it loses its connection to its divine center. So in the 12th house, you know, Sun's... Um, you know, the, the crown energy needs to be more in the head, moving up into the divine, not in the feet, which would be kind of like the 12th house, which one the karka. So in the seventh house, also a bad place for, for, for uh, divine energy. Um, if you have K2 in Pisces, Scorpio, or Sagittarius, you have a positive crown chakra because that's where K2 does best. And these people are often uh, inclined toward meditation because of, of that placement. Now the brow chakra, which I separated from from the third eye, um, and again it sometimes overlaps in some systems. It's the center of the forehead. Um, it controls the pineal gland and the nervous system. Um, it, it's connected to the lower buddhic or consciousness of the moon. Again, the sun and the moon are the, always the two most important planets in the chart because they represent our connections to the higher realm, the higher the higher consciousness, the higher intuition, the higher female aspect of the divine, the Shakti uh, energy and the sun to the Shiva energy, to the to the higher wisdom of the divine. And um, again, by, uh, the brow chakra is connected to the sign of cancer. Um, when the brow chakra is working, you know, there's a focus on spiritual practice, philosophical truths, intuition, mystical insight. So we need a strong moon and an unafflicted moon um, and, and we need the sign of cancer to be unafflicted for um, to people to have for this higher spirituality. And there are a lot of places where the moon can do well, um, but you, you want, you know, you can put Jupiter in cancer, then you get a very spiritual person. You get a person with higher intuition. You put, I think even Venus in cancer being, um, uh, um, even, even it's, you know, not an ideal placement, but it, it's still kind of higher energy. Sun in Cancer too again is is kind of you know creating creating the uh, a strong connection between Moon and Sun in the brow and the um, um, the brow and the and, and the crown chakras and then mystical insights hot meditation um, all can 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 blossom um, there's better judgment there's seeing the limitless potential of 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 energies. Um, so we like Moon and Taurus, Moon and Cancer, Moon and Pisces, Moon connected to the ninth house. We don't Moon and Scorpio puts puts the Moon in the back solar plexus where the energy is going down. It gets kind of angry and kind of caught, and and the and, you know the energy is going down. The brow chakra is connected to the Moon where the energy is up. Um, uh, you don't want the Moon aspected by Saturn, Mars, or Rahu because it, then it kind of a, it blocks some of that Moon energy, that brow chakra energy. Um, Remedies for the brow chakra, again, meditation, stargazing, lapis lazuli. There, there's all kinds of um, sounds for the chakras. I'm not going to teach them. It's too complicated. Um, third eye. Third eye is located in the center of the forehead between the eyebrows. 
connected to the pituitary gland, the nervous system, the central nervous system. Again, we said it's connected to Cancer Leo, the sun and the moon. Um, it energizes the pituitary gland and um, it controls all the major chakras in the endocrine system and it and affects the vital organs. Um, uh, it can create diseases of the endocrine system, eye elements, and even cancer when it's out of balance. Um, when the Ajna chakra, the third eye, is afflicted, again, that can be afflictions to the sun and the moon, to Cancer Leo. Um, there's lacking concentration, there's confusion, arrogance, strong will, forcefulness, um, disconnection from the source, loss of touch with reality, impaired vision, confusion, and forgetfulness. Don't, don't forget the sun and the moon are very connected to the eyes, of course. And um, when you get eye ailments, often you get, you know, you, you, sun in the 12th house, sometimes you'll have problems with it. all kind of ways of looking at this, but um, you can kind of, I just wanted to show you the connections here, you know, the way vision is impaired when the sun and the moon and the third eye are impaired. Um, if you have problems in the third eye, there's lack of radiance, there are headaches, tensions in the neck, teeth grinding, nightmares, you know, um, these are the kind of things that Rahu causes, put, you know, put Rahu in Leo or Rahu in Cancer. They're probably kind of afflicting the, the you know, the, the third eye a little bit too much, you know, you, unless, unless, you know, there, there's a lot of strength there. Um, uh, you can have, um, traumas, you know, obviously if you had whiplash and hit your head, that could affect your brow chakra and, and, and afflict the, create an injury for the third eye. Um, PTSD, violence, shocking events, accidents can also impact the third eye and create all kinds of problems. Um, so uh, we often, remedies for the third eye usually are, are alternate nostril pranayama. Um, most of you have studied that in yoga classes. Very powerful. I'm, I'm always shocked, you know, when I take classes, um, when you need to calm the third eye, you do you do the alternate nostril pranayama. If you, if you don't know that, um, I'm sure you can find a videotape on YouTube or learn it at a yoga studio, but you can take five minutes and it calms the whole system. It moves the 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 sun the the moon the, the moon uh, the solar and lunar energies even up through all the chakras as, and it balances it so um, it's very important as a as a remedy um, okay throat chakra um, located at the center of the throat it controls and energizes the throat the voice box the air tube the thyroid uh, glands I've got gland band here. Uh, the parathyroid gland, and the lymphatic system, um, also connected to the sex chakra. Now, there's a big, um, this is, to me, this is kind of fascinating, and I've, I've always known this, but um, there's a connection between the throat chakra and the sex chakra, and that's, you know, the second chakra, and you can see that, in, in you know, between the second and the eighth houses, kind of, you know, it's kind of when um, the second, the second, house in Vedic astrology is voice and speech and the eighth house is one of the very sexual houses so you can kind of see how there's a connection between you know this the throat chakra and the sex chakra just even looking at the signs of this uh, at, the, at, the, at the in the houses um, <clears throat> so when you have problems in the throat chakra when your throat chakra is blocked you may have a tendency for Sore throats, loss of voice, and asthma, which I'm having now from speaking too fast. Um, you can have you can have problems with speaking. Um, 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 let's see. So when you have afflictions to the throat chakra, um, create, sometimes creativity is blocked. Again, that's kind of Depression can happen. You can feel boxed in. You might talk excessively. Um, you might not speak up for yourself. You may, you know, that might be blocked. Uh, you can, you can, might be controlling others with words. You may be shy, quiet, withdrawn, and holding back your inner self. You may resist new beginnings, and you may run away from the void of creative possibilities. Um, there could be problems with stuttering, physical problems, thyroid problems neck problems. So these are all connected to the throat chakra. So 
This can happen if Mercury, translate this into astrology, Mercury is afflicted in the chart. Gemini and Virgo are afflicted in the chart. You, you, you get problems, speech, stuttering, voice tightness, thyroid problems. Um, emotional, you can get depression. Um, and throat, um, uh, throat chakra problems can be caused by neck traumas like accidents or operations. I, I've had, I have Rahu in my second house, which is the, um, let's just look at that here. Well, some of the examples I have to do are really kind of related to me because I, you know, I understand all my systems. It's going to be hard for me. I'll, I'll see if I'll look at your charts, but it's going to be hard for me. I can diagnose certain things, but um, it's kind of interesting. Hi, Barry. Say, can you pull up the North Indian as well, please? Okay, thank you. Um, I have a page for that. Let's see where it went. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll put it up for you, Claudia. I, I It's very funny. I've actually... Um, I'm going to have to put, Meals. Okay, it worked. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. Great, thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, so here's here's my chart again. Scorpio rising. Um, I have Rahu in the second house here. Um, again, I said the second house is kind of connected to the throat and to speech. And I have had, I've had parathyroid problems. I've had, um, I've had my tonsils out. Um, I've had all kinds of neck injuries. And you can just see how Rahu um, aspect, you know, in the second house is, is affecting you know, that center, but it's obviously affecting my speech center. Also, I had stuttering problems when I was young. Um, and um, Mercury is Lord of my eighth house here. It's, it's the dispositor Saturn is in the 12th house here. So my, my, mer my, my throat chakra um, is, um, again, this is very sophisticated. I mean, we, we're looking at the second house, we're looking at Mercury, Mercury the dispositor of Mercury is in the 12th house. Um, I've had all kinds of uh, second house afflictions, throat chakra afflictions, because um, Mercury is also the GK and Gemini astrology. So it's quite quite fascinating. Um, this would just show you that while I was um, I, I was sent to a speech therapist when I was young, um, and again I, I grew out of all of that. I still have a little bit, but you know it's it's really kind of connected there. Um, when, when the when the throat chakra is balanced, we communicate powerfully from the truth. We inspire others through our voice. Um, we have we express without fear. We have loyalty, honesty, reliability, kindness, and gentleness. Those are all Jupiter qualities. Again, we said Jupiter's in the throat chakra. Um, we have expressing oneself comfortably and knowing we um, and knowing when to be silent. We speak and act and live from purpose. So. We express without fear. So again, those are all second house, Mercury things, Gemini things. So you have to, you know, if you're looking at the throat chakra, we have, we have to look at the second house. We have to look at Mercury. We have to look at Gemini and, and Virgo. And we also have K2 in, in, in my Gemini here. So um, we have a stationary Jupiter aspecting Mercury. It's probably 
again, Jupiter, you know, is the is the is the grace that solves all problems. I I didn't maintain my speech problems all my life. I I have had um, I had my parathyroid out about eight uh, six years ago. I, I I have had you know, but you can see how all these things are kind of connected um, through the throat, throat chakra being afflicted with K2 here also. Um, healing for the throat chakra, um, nature music, um, quietness, meditation, positive thinking, food prepared with love, alternate nostril breathing, all these things are kind of helpful. Um, Astrology, we talked about Mercury and Jupiter, very connected to the throat chakra, Mercury and Bucher. Debilitated Mercury, obviously, anytime you get Merc Mercury in Aries or Scorpio, you don't want Mercury connected to Mars. And I, in this case, I have Mercury connected to Saturn through the dispositor. Um, it creates problems for the, for the um, uh, and I have always had trouble speaking up for myself. So this is all that, in my chart, you can kind of see this because the dispositor Mercury for Aquarius is, um, even though it's exalted, um, it's in the 12th house and it's the dispositor just being in the 12th house is a problem. Um, heart chakra, center of the chest. Um, from the heart chakra energizes the heart and thymus glands. Again, thymus is connected to our immune system and there's a thing called the thymus tab. Um, there, one of the things that, that I, learned was that um, sometimes immune system problems um, are, are if your thymus doesn't function, you can actually tap it and stimulate it. But it's also the gentle tap three times on the heart. Um, and the back heart chakra, um, there's a back heart chakra, energizes the lungs, heart, and thymus glands also. Thymus helps fight off infection. Um, it's a center for higher and refined emotions. Um, um, and when the, when the Energy, when the heart chakra gets too connected to the, the to the solar plexus, then we get too many negative emotions. You know, if we get angry at people, if we get jealous, you know, all these kind of negative emotions, the energy is moving down from the heart chakra to the, you know, to the solar plexus, and, and we're not bringing it up higher. Um, heart chakra is a place of circulation, so, uh, touch, feeling, quality, love. Uh, thymus command is very important, obviously, for um, stuff. Um, when we have a blocked heart chakra, there's never enough love. Love is blocked. I'm unlovable. I'm unable to access my feelings and needs. I give to others but feel disconnected to love. I'm embarrassed when people give me tenderness and softness. I'm hurt by rejection. Uh, I've closed my heart. I'm cold. My imagination is blocked. I'm embarrassed when people give me tenderness and softness. So um, when the heart chakra... Um, Physical signs of a blocked heart chakra can be shallow breathing. Again, the heart and lungs are always connected. Um, when you people who developed uh, heart problems develop lung problems, and when you have and vice versa, you always see that. Um, my dad has heart problems, and then he has lung problems because the lungs fill with fluid. Um, tight shoulders are also connected to another sign of a blocked heart chakra. Again, that's all in that kind of area. Um, emotional heart blocks, being selfish, too attached, too possessive in love, excessively needy, cut off of needs and feelings. Um, again, you could have a trauma to the heart chakra. You might, maybe if you were choked or strangled or you've had a deep emotional wound, you know, those could all create traumas to the heart chakra. Uh, when the heart chakra is balanced, um, I give my heart freely. I emphasize with others. I receive love freely. I unconditionally love myself and others. I blend my interests with those of my partner. I'm willing to be touched and touch. I access my ideas and inspiration. That's why you know Venus has to be part of the heart chakra, and because love and touch often go together. You know, um, sex is love and touch, um, and just you know, my dogs love being touched, and it's you know, and everybody shows love through touch. Venus is connected to touch and we express love through touch. And so the heart, when the heart chakra is balanced, we express love through touch. Um, uh, healing um, modalities for the heart chakra, wearing pink and green string instruments. Now the heart, um, the heart 
chakras connected to stringed in, in, in instruments. So listening to violin concertos and, and any string music will heal the heart chakra. Um, I, I didn't put this in everyone, but there are there are musical instruments um, connected to each one of the chakras, and you can heal the chakras by listening to the appropriate kind of uh, musical energies. Um, um, walking, baths, rose quartz, rose aroma, pranayamas, and singing. Singing is a good healing modality for the heart chakra, obviously. It's a Venus kind of healing modality. Um, I'm gonna pull up my chart again. Um, I have a lot of I have a lot of fourth house. I have a lot of stuff. So fourth house, fourth and fifth house are 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 the the physical heart are connect are the fourth and the fifth houses in Vedic astrology. I've got a, a first I've got malefic Mercury, Lord of the eighth house in my fourth house. It's creating a big block. Um, my Moon uh, is debilitated. My Venus is um, in a Parivartan a yoga between Venus and Saturn here. Um, and so it, my Venus is afflicted. So I would say my heart chakra, um, is afflicted the most in my chart, although I have a big heart and I think it's because I have Lord of the ninth in the first year. Um, I have, I have a very developed brow chakra. Um, I think because of the, the Lord of the ninth is in the first house here, but if my Venus and, and moon energies connected to the heart and I do have all, all the problems that we talked about. I have had, um, and it shows that my heart chakra is uh, um, somewhat uh, problematic. Um, solar plexus. The solar plexus is located in the hollow area between the ribs. So it's not in your navel, it's not in your stomach, it's actually right under your rib crave. It controls the diaphragm, the liver, the pancreas, the stomach, the small and large intestine, the adrenals, the heart, and the lungs. Um, the quality of blood that we have is due to whether the liver purifies or not. So it's, it's um, liver is very important um, for the body. Autoimmune diseases are connected to the solar plexus. Um, solar plexus is important for pancreas, diabetes, digestive problems, called bladder and cholesterol problems. Um, now the solar plexus is also a center for lower emotions like, and that's the dark side of Mars and the sun, right? Amb ambition, courage, perseverance, anger, hatred, envy, greed, violence, and cruelty. So um, when the when when Mars and the Sun are badly afflicted, when um, when Aries and Scorpio, which are the centers for the solar plexus, are badly afflicted, you get you can get these kind of darker energies coming out, which is why everybody always talks about Scorpio as being kind of this awful sign of revenge and vengeance and you know, darkness. And, and it can be that way if Mars is weak, if there are no benefics, you know, to help out Scorpio, you know, then the, those, those darker energies can come out. We usually like the higher side of air, uh, of Mars, the, you know, the ambition, the power, the expression of power, the courage, and those are more of the Aries energies. Um, when the solar plexus is blocked, um, we control and manipulate other people. Um, we feel powerlessness sometimes. Um, I mean, there's two things. If we feel powerless, we control and manipulate people, but um, uh, it's, it's a problem. Um, we're argumentative and quarrelsome and abusive. Sometimes when, when the solar plexus is blocked or afflicted, uh, we lack joy. Again, the positive, you know, the sun in its highest energy, when it's exalted and when it's in the right houses, it produces a lot of joy and bliss. You know, it has that higher divine energy. When the sun's afflicted and the solar plexus energy isn't functioning well, um, then it it creates um, joylessness and devitalization, uh, unable to relax, um, being frustrated, you know, with, with expressing your power. So this is all solar plexus energy. It's all Mars and sun energy. Um, let, and I'm able to kind of manifest your ideas. And again, if you have a, weak Mars or something like that. Physical problems with the solar plexus, um, too much heat or cold, irritations, emotional coldness, liver and gallbladder problems, digestive disorders, eye problems and headaches. Um, emotional problems of the solar plexus, anger, controlling anger, depression from blocked anger. Um, again, anger is the, you know, when your solar plexus isn't 
working right, when it's blocked, when you know Aries and Scorpio are particularly afflicted and Mars and the Sun are afflicted, you know, we get that we get depression or anger. I mean, one of the things that people don't understand is depression is often blocked anger. Um, what that means is um, if we, you know, if Mars is retrograde, um, if um, Mars is like in the twelfth house, we don't we tend not to express our anger. And when we don't express our anger, we get depressed. And so people always think depression is Saturn and the moon. It can be Mars um, in the 12th or Mars retrograde. Um, if, if the solar plexus energy is blocked and we can't and we get frustrated, then our anger um, implodes and we get depressed and frustrated. Um, solar plexus traumas. Um, um, you might have been in, in, in a violence, you know, um, if you had violence done to you, if you were in a fire, if you were abused, if you had sunstroke, if you had problems with eating, starvation, um, lack of joy and humor in one's life, trauma around the father, problems with male energy. These are all kind of solar plexus traumas. Um, when the solar plexus is balanced and happy, we're alive, enthusiastic, vital, radiant, um, Personal, we have personal power and charisma. We motivate others. We're focused. Uh, we accept completely ourselves and others, and, and our inner light protects us from negativity. Um, again, uh, astrology of the solar plexus, um, third house, Karak and Mars, use of willpower, as I said, Aries, Scorpio, Mars, Sun. Um, we've talked about some of these things before. We don't want Sun and Libra, Capricorn. Aquarius or the 12th of the seventh houses. Um, we like it in Leo and exalted in in um, in uh, it's, it's such. in my chart. Um, an interesting solar plexus. Um, so we, we're looking at. I have a lot of energy on the um, uh, on the solar plexus axis here. So I'm Scorpio rising. Um, and I have Mars in Aries. So Mars in Aries is very strong for expressing will, for, for acting. And people are always amazed about the amount of energy that I have. And that Mars in Aries does give me a lot of powerful solar plexus energy to kind of move forward. My sun is also very strong. It's lower of the 10th in the fifth house. It's in Jupiter's nakshatra. It's in a friend's sign. So uh, the two planets for the solar plexus, uh, sun and Mars, are pretty, are pretty strong. Um, um, and yet I, I have manifested some of the difficult solar plexus energies you've got. So I have the exalted Saturn in the 12th house aspecting Mars. So this is my biggest block. And especially when I was younger to expressing my power to being reserved. Um, and, um, I, I've gotten through that. I have to do, you know, I have to get my solar plexus moving to get out there. Otherwise I kind of implode and don't do anything. But I, I my solar plexus is, is fairly strong. My digestive has always been weak because of the um, Saturn aspect. So very kind of interesting. Um, navel chakra. Now again, I, I differentiated essentially the navel chakra from the sex chakra. It's located in the belly over the navel. So, I mean, it's a, it, it controls the small intestine, the large intestine, the appendix. It affects the speed of giving birth. Um, when it's afflicted, it causes constipation. Loose bowels, ability to absorb food properly, can lead to appendicitis if afflicted, intestinal problems, low vitality. Um, Again, Jupiter is connected to generosity and greed. So when, when Jupiter is happy in the chart, we're generous, we're giving, we're helping others, big, big Buddha belly. When Jupiter is afflicted, like in Taurus, we're greedy, we hold on to our money, we don't help other people. So, you know, this is the dark and light sides of Jupiter. Um, you want Jupiter in Cancer because it's the Ashna Chakra where the higher wisdom flourishes. Uh, Ming Meng, um, no one really talks about very much. It's very important. Um, it's, um, it's be, it's the back of the navel. So again, there's a front the chakras have front and back sides. Often the back of the navel 
is um, the Ming Meng, um, and it's responsible for the upward flow of prana. It energizes the kidneys, the adrenals, and blood pressure. Um, uh, when you have kidney problems and blood pressure problems, it's often connected to the Ming Meng, the back of the navel. Um, and I don't know, the back of the navel is the Scorpio center. I don't, I have not really thought about Scorpio being connected to kidney problems and blood pressure problems, but uh, I have to, I haven't seen that, but um, I have to play with that a little bit more. Sex, sex chakra, um, which again is located in the pubic area, it's connected to the bladder, urethra, also connected to the throat, as I mentioned earlier, connected to the sex organs and the legs. Um, so when there are problems here, urinary impotency, sterility, and large prostate, uh, female reproductive problems. When the sex chakra is blocked, there's an overindulgence in food, sex, alcohol, and drugs. Um, we tend to be envious and possessive. These are the dark sides of Venus. I mentioned Venus is very connected to the sex chakra. Uh, when we, when, when it's, when, when Venus is blocked, then we, you know, we go for sex, we go for food, we go for alcohol. We try to we get into addictive patterns. Um, you know, block sex chakra. You know, Venus is a water planet, right? The sex chakra is a very emotional, watery chakra our moods get unpredictable uh we have the inability to say no we use sex as a substitute for affection we're overly sensitive um we live in a fantasy world yearning for sexual fulfillment um we have our creativity is blocked again the venus is the planet of art and the the cure for sex problems um is usually you have to take that energy some people are over sexed and they just can't control it you have to get them into creative projects, into taking art classes or producing art or anything creative, making a creative video, and it will take all that sexual energy and transform it into creative energy and, artist, and art. So um, when, when the energy is slowing down, the sex chakra gets blocked. Um, other physical manifestations, pubic bone, prostate, ovary problems, impotency, uh, ex uh, excessive neediness, uh, weight problems, bloating, lumps in the breast, lymphatic problems. Um, emotional qualities of, of the sex chakra, um, I have to have food, sex, alcohol, excitement, stress, um, parental modeling of sexual inhibition, it's a problem. Uh, you might have had a trauma with sexual molestation or learning to swim, and all these things can injure the sex chakra. Um, you, could have, you could have had problems with your mother. Um, when the sex chakra is balanced, um, when you have a strong Venus, we have a strong Taurus and Libra, um, deeply intuitive, still and sensitive and, and feeling deeply, rejuvenating and healing oneself, cleansed of shame and guilt around sex, self-nurturing, um, ease and openness with opposite the opposite sex, um, it's experiencing the joy of creativity and being creative in everything that we do. Um, healing modalities. Orange is actually the color of the sex chakra. Um, looking at going to the water, looking at water can be very healing. Swimming, floating, uh, swimming can be kind of a healing modality for, uh, the, for the second chakra. Um, exercises where you use the hip bones, uh, the hip, um, the hips and pelvis and shoulders, um, getting a lot of body work, getting touched. I mean, Whenever people have problems with Venus, particularly if they're Libra or Taurus, I always send them to massage because they need they need to be touched more. And if they have problems with the second chakra and they're not touched enough, you have to get them to go to massages. Um, sometimes they need deep massage work, like Swedish massage, to emotionally release deep patterns. Um, Astrology of the sex chakra, again, we're looking at Venus, we're looking at Libra and Taurus, um, Jupiter is more for the navel chakra. Debilitated Venus may make you too sexual, move the energy down too much. Exalted Venus creates beauty and moves it into Pisces, which is the, uh, you know, the sign of the zodiac connected to the second chakra. Uh, Venus is exalted in Pisces, the sign of the second chakra. Um, okay, so let me uh, just, I'm, I, sorry, this is, I'm being encyclopedic here. I do apologize. Um, um, this is me again. 
Um, so we're looking at Taurus and Libra. We're looking and we're looking at Venus um, to see what's going on. Now I have um, I have a very complicated second chakra, um, probably more complicated than anything. So first of all, I have this Parivartana Yoga exchanging houses between Saturn and Libra and Venus in in Capricorn. Now, um, because it's between the third and the twelfth houses, it's not a good Parivartana Yoga. It causes problems. Third house is a very sexual house. It's primal sexual energy or prim primal vi violent energy. Venus in the in the second house, in the third house, has is a little bit over sex. When I was younger, with Venus in the third house. Um, I, I, I was really a little bit uncontrollable about, about my sexual expression. Um, and I've had all kinds of, I've had prostate problems when, at the age of 29, which is really kind of very unusual. And again, this is very badly afflicted Venus with the Parivartana Yoga with Saturn in the, in the exalted Saturn in the 12th. Um, Taurus gets an aspect from the moon, I think, and from a debilitated moon, it's not helping a whole lot. Um, Saturn, there's a malefic in Libra here. Um, I, it's causing problems. It's not, even though Saturn and Venus are friends, I guess the exchange is better. I, 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 I would say my second, um, my, my, my sexuality has been very messed up. Um, and and of, all, of all my chakras, you know, when I see all the afflictions here, it's, it's, it's very clear. Um, okay. Um, Bay chakra. Um, The base chakra is located at the base of the spine in the coccyx area. It energizes the muscular and skeletal systems um, connected to re reproduction of blood, growth rate of cells, general vitality, body heat, affects the heart and sex organs. Um, base chakra is very important. Uh, when the base chakra is afflicted, you have problems with arthritis, spinal problems, blood ailments and allergies, uh, growth problems, Cancer is actually very connected to Saturn in the base chakra. Uh, low vitality, heart ailments, brain and sexual ailments. Um, now, interesting thing is, is that the base chakra is very connected to K2 also. It's the trunk, you know, the, the trunk of K2, you know, again, in, in mythology is actually the spinal cord. And um, when, when people always start Vedic remedies with Ganesh ceremonies because you want to stimulate the base of the spine and wake up the Kundalini energy where K2 is residing. And that's where Ganesh is residing at the base of the spine. Um, and so it's not only Saturn, Ganesh, uh, Saturn is also, uh, uh, K2 is there, Ganesh is there. And then energy needs to move up to the crown chakra. Um, and you find a lot of elderly people have very depleted base chakras. I mean, you know, Saturn takes over at age 70 and you actually have to get them, you know, knee problems develop, um, a lot of problems develop with, with when, as the base chakra gets deleted. Base chakra is, you know, it's life. It's, it's, we need its survival and self-preservation as the, as the base chakra shrinks later in life, we get, um, we lose interest in life. Old people get, you know, don't want to get active. When the base chakra is strong, we have vitality, we have interest in life, um, and, and we move into the world, the energy flows up. When the energy, the base chakra is under-functioning, uh, uh, we get impractical, unrealistic, out of touch with reality, we're bad with finances. Um, now, remedy, one of the remedies I always give for the base chakra is deep knee bends. It can just be half knee bends, the chair pose, walking and grounding exercises. So very, um, you have to kind of, um, um, you have to you have to expand the base chakra. Um, it's very simple. If you have problems with money, if you have problems with survival, if you have problems with fear, you have to increase the base chakra energy. You can just do um, half knee bends, um, um, you do about 40 of them a day, it will increase the base chakra energy. In yoga, the chair pose will ground you. We looked at, at Saturn poses last week. Um, meditation, of course, is wonderful. You stimulate Ganesh and moves up the spine. So base chakra obviously is everything. Um, 
when uh, Vaishak is connected to the earth, again, Capricorn, uh, when it's blocked, fear, worry, and security about survival, you have a weak Saturn, Saturn in Aries, you're always worrying about money, um, unstable, dizzy, ungrounded, spacey. You don't want, um, you know, you meet people like that, they have very developed higher meditation realms uh, from Mott's meditation, but they, they're not grounded. Um, they can't balance their checking account. They can't make money. They're they're ungrounded. Uh, they're meditating too much, so it's a problem. Um, Saturn, when it's out of balance, can be too rigid. It can be stuck and stubborn. You know that's a problem. It can be too material. Um, you know, as I said, there, there, you meet a lot of people, most of the world, who have not uh, enlivened their higher chakras through meditation. And, you know, they they have very developed lower chakras: first chakra, second chakra, third chakra. They make a lot of money. They're very sex. They they exert their will in the world. They create a lot of energy, but they they don't have any compassion. They don't care about the world. They haven't developed their heart chakra. They they haven't they may not be very interested in the divine on uh, in, in experiencing it in meditation. Um, manifestations of blocked earth chakra. Um, um, you're afraid. The emotions are afraid. You're full of fear of survival. You're afraid of earthquakes. If you've had traumas, um, earth chakra tra traumas, you know, accidents, earthquakes, lack of security from mother, loss of mother, those are all, um, uh, I have had all of those. Um, afflictions in the astrology, so afflict you don't want Saturn afflicted, retrograde Saturn is going to be a problem. Um, um, Saturn, we have to, you know, um, Saturn in the first house is particularly bad. You don't want fear in the head. You want it in the Bay Chakra. You want it in the 10th house um, where it's going to be good for business. Um, Saturn in the fourth house is not particularly good. You don't want Saturn in the how, in the heart, you know, it creates fear. You don't want Saturn in the eighth house um, or the 12th house. Um, those are particularly bad places for Saturn. Um, Capricorn and Aquarius should be unafflicted. You don't want malefic aspects there. Um, you want your earth signs strong, um, you know, t uh, Taurus, um, Virgo and Capricorn. Um, so when the, when Saturn is strong, you're here and now there's comfort in the body. You're grounded. Um, you're ma you manifest financial success. You're aware of the body's needs. You feel a sense of mother mothering from within, live in harmony with the earth. All of these things are very um, powerful. Um, now, this comes back to our cookbook. Now, let me, again, let me go back to my chart again. I'll see if we can look at your charts and we can go over a little bit. I don't have any appointments to go to, and I know you're on overwhelm. Um, so, we're, so for the base chakra, we're looking at in my chart, we're looking at Capricorn and Aquarius, and we're looking at Saturn. Um, um, and um, so we've got, as, the good thing is, is that we have Venus and Capricorn. I have actually a very strong base chakra. I have actually been able to manifest a lot of money at times in my life. And I have to, re if in transit Saturn gets weak, I just have to remember to do my deep knee bend. So um, my exalted Saturn, is also blessing my Muladhara chakra, my base chakra. Um, it is retrograde. Um, it does get an aspect from Jupiter, which is helping. It also gets an aspect from Mars. So there's a lot of mixed energy for my, my base chakra, but I also have a benefic um, in Aquarius. So I would say my base chakra is very strong. I have very strong survival energy. I've been very good at manifesting money. Um, I have had problems with being grounded. I mean, there are afflictions um, from Mars. Jupiter, um, Jupiter is helping, is aspecting uh, Aquarius also here. So there are some, um, I would say, you know, knowing my chakra system, that my, um, my, my Muladhara chakra, my base chakra is very strong. Okay, so um, I've thrown a lot at you. Um, you can listen to this lesson again. You can read the, the, the charts. Let me take questions. Let me look at your charts and seeing if anything kind of comes through. There's a lot more material. I, this could be a four-week class. Um, um, I do need to develop this material. It's quite fascinating, isn't it? Um, I didn't get to the section on uh, nakshatras um, and um, chakras. Um, I 
did put it in um, in the notes. I, I I could go over it next week if you're really interested in. Um, I know it's quite quite fascinating, but we could do a whole lesson on it. I mean, Joe Tish is is um, this is a survey course because it's a mini course. So anyway, so um, I know you're on Joe Tish overload. Um, I, I've thrown out a lot of information. You'll need to listen to this tape again. You'll need to read the notes again, but let me take your questions. And I also need need some reactions. Um, did you, uh, I just unmuted Laura. Um, Laura, I mean, you're a doctor. Was this useful or was it overwhelming? Or maybe on her cell phone, she was, um, okay. Judy, um, I'm just unmuted you. I'm sorry you were muted before. Do you have any questions? Yaffe, did you did you want to get on for a second? Yeah. Um, well, I just had to, something I was thought was sort of interesting. I had two friends who developed detached retinas uh, right around the lunar eclipse that we just had. And I thought it was kind of interesting because I think they were both in the left eye, which where you were saying vision and the sun and the moon are so important. And I know you can't always be that literal, but I thought it was interesting that both of them experienced sudden occlusion, you know, obliteration of their vision in the left eye. And I know the one person who's actually a cousin um, has a debilitated moon, which was in the 12th house from the eclipse. So I thought it was sort of interesting. You no, know, 12th house and second house are the are the eyes, and sun and the moon are very important for eyes. And I always get confused. I, I think 12th house is the left eye, and and second house is the right eye. But I, I always have trouble remembering that. If anybody knows it by heart, please let me know. Um, you say that every time. Pardon? Oh, hi. <laughs> sorry, I just came back to class, Barry. Sorry. Oh, good. I was just asking you. I know you've been in, in and out because of some whatever is going on. Um, did you, um, I, I'm, I'm really, because you're a medical doctor, I'm really interested, uh, I mean, uh, uh, a doctor, a chiropractor, I'm just very interested in, in what you thought. Um, this was like, um, I'm putting my heart on my sleeve with this lesson because a lot of this is very, new material that I've been developing over five years. And, you know, some of it I, I know from all my experience studying, but I am trying to teach it and put it into words is tricky. So um, I'm, I'm just curious if, if, if anybody got anything out of this lesson or you're in awe and overwhelm. <laughs> uh, you know, I have, um, you know, I've been practicing Kriya yoga, which is, uh, uh, Sri Yukteswar, I mean, it goes way back. It goes, you know, thousands and thousands of years back in terms of its um, relationship with our energy centers. And the, it's, the, the connection with the, the constellations and our energy centers as they go up and down the spine of the human nervous system is it's a clue and it's a pathway to the to the complete beyond it's it's beyond words um what the human body um and the the divine light and pulsation that happens in the body and following the chakra system according to kriya yoga it's actually um, I've, I've learned to simplify it in my own practice. It's like, you know, the bottom center is the money center. The second center is all our relationships and family. And our third center is food. And the fourth center, the heart, is all of our emotions, the good and the bad and the ugly. Right, and, the moon, yeah. And, and, yeah, and the fifth center is, you know, all of our beliefs and as soon as you go up to the sixth center then you've actually be begun to access the realm for higher wisdom and um 
opening the crown chakra, of course, gives us immediate access to the infinite. And right. Me too. That's, so that's a that's basically, you know, what what I've learned, and everything that you just said is great. <laughs> okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I just want to get um, Claudia. Um, I think you're very involved in healing. Was this lesson useful for you? I don't know if you can talk. Sometimes you can't. No, I can't talk. I just, I have a, sorry, I have a hacking cough that's coming out. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was definitely useful, Barry. Um, I, I have to go over it again because it is, it is a lot to digest, right? Um, so there's certainly, um, you know, like some of the teachings are a little bit different from what I've picked up from different variable modalities. So it's, I think it will be interesting to actually go through some charts and, and see how to apply it. So yeah, yeah no, it was, I thought it was really good. Thank you for that. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, um, it is like, it, it, it is, like I said, this, this lesson could easily be three or four lessons. And I, I, cause we're doing a mini course, I kind of like put all the notes in and I kind of, yeah, we, we really need to kind of workshop it with examples and, um, you know, because I've studied chakras so much and I, you know, if I, if I'm, you know, if I have a client in the room, I can measure their chakras and I can measure if, um, if their base chakra is too small and then, you know, you kind of confirm it in the chart and, you know, because Saturn and, and Capricorn and Aquarius are afflicted and you can kind of, and you can give them modalities. So there are ways that, that I can use it. And, and last week, if you listen to the Astro Yoga tape, there are, yoga postures that you can do to, to kind of balance the chakras. And like I said, this really can, you know, we, we can spend another four weeks on it easily. Um, and something that I, it's like work and development, but I, I wanted to share it with you. It's, it's like putting my, um, just getting my painting out there before it's done on some level, but I, I just wanted to share it with you. Um, other reactions, Nicole, did you, I know you're in, into health. Did you find it interesting? Yes, extremely. I think this is extremely insightful. And also, because um, there's a massive amount of information, also quite the full spectrum of, you know, linking both chakra and the healing and also all sort of modality in the yoga pose and so on. So I think it's extremely helpful. Yeah, you know, it's, it's um, like I said, we could spend a lot more time with it. I mean, between the two tapes on Astro Yoga and this one, if you study them and you study the notes and you play with it, you can develop it. And that's, um, you know, as I mentioned with James Braha, you have to, you definitely have to listen to this material a couple times and read it. I, I gave you an appendix in the PowerPoints, which is about um, how to apply Vedic astrology to um, medical astrology. And, and I do hope to do a medical astrology class next year, um, in, in which case I will probably expand this material to four lessons. But um, I just wanted to give you kind of an overview because I've been wanting to share this for a long time. Thank you, Nicole. Anybody else, you. Julie? Did you, I don't know if you can get on. Julie has been involved in healing for a long time. Julie, can you get on? Okay, maybe not. Jessica, did you have any questions? I know you may not have as much astrology behind you, but did you find it interesting? Yes, I found it very interesting. Um, I've been studying astrology for, I mean, it's been a, a part of my path for most of my life, but the geotish is um, newer to me. It's only been a few years in, but this was, this was very informative. This is a long, um, a lot of the style of how I teach uh, yoga. I'm a yoga teacher and an artist. So this really um, speaks volume to me. Um, so thank you. I appreciate oh, it. Oh, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. You know, um, and Jessica, if you could send me a photo, that would be great. And then we can include you. And if you want to send me your chart details, I usually do people's charts. Um, for examples, I'm afraid to, to, to do any of them today because I don't know what I'll come up sure. with. But <laughs> <laughs> no yeah i'll go ahead and i'll send that information I, I would like um i would like for you to have it so yeah sure great thank you great okay afi um did you i know this was a little bit new for you too um was it useful yes of course yeah. very uh very, it yeah. was oh, oh. Yeah, just a second okay afi go ahead 
uh, it was very uh, insightful and informative and um, eye-opening actually and uh, your tip uh, so of course I wasn't in your um, last class because of the time difference but um, the tip about doing the chair pose was uh, very useful um, uh, you know I think I'm going to start doing that I, I think I've got pretty decent base chakra but <clears throat> uh, you know, I'm going to try it anyways because um, you everybody do. could do with, with with more money. Right, and there's yeah, the deep knee bends. I I do have a whole series of exercises for um for healing the chakras. I um if you if you listen to the three hour version, I put it in Dropbox. Is a I did I did a three hour version of Astro Yoga. And in the three-hour version, I demonstrated the exercises for healing the chakras, um, for energizing them. And they're, you want to energize them when they're depleted because, like, um, sometimes, you know, you, you know they're depleted because you have low energy. But, like, when the, um, you know, when the base chakra is depleted, you just don't have any energy to to do anything. You just want to lay around in bed and not do anything. You don't have any interest in life. You know, you don't even want to get out there, you know, and that's, that's like a depleted base chakra. But, um, when, when the throat chakra is depleted, you just can't speak up. You're like in a meeting and you can't express yourself. You know, when the heart chakra is depleted, you, you know, you have trouble relating, you have trouble feeling, you have trouble expressing your emotions and, you know, you can, so there, there are, there's a whole series of exercises that I did put in Astro Yoga 1, um, which is the three hour version. I put it in Dropbox and if you haven't had a chance to listen to it, you know, definitely listen to it. These two tapes were supposed to go together. Um, this was an expansion on chakras and then the yoga did talk about chakras and um, I, I, I have so much more material to give, but I said I have to do like a four or six hour week workshop uh, on this and I will get to it at some point. Okay, thank you, Effie. Catherine, you had a question? No, sorry, Barry, I thought you said Kathy. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, no, I'm all good. Um, um, I, I would like, I mean, I, I we, we could spend some time on your charts. I'm just kind of um, sometime, we will, I'm going to think about it. Maybe I will continue a little bit next week with some of this material. I may, uh, I may be able to fit in another half hour to kind of integrate this material better. So what I'm going to suggest is um, if you haven't listened to the first tape, especially the three hour version on Astro Yoga, um, definitely do that. It's in, in the Dropbox. I would, I would, you know, go over this material again. It's, it's encyclopedic. It wasn't meant for a two hour lesson. Um, but you can listen to it again. You can go through the PowerPoints and, and let's see if we can integrate it next week, the first half hour of class. So we'll try to, I'll see if I can pull in case studies. Um, I'll, I'll, I want your questions and I want to, I'll pull up your charts and I'll see if we can do some case studies um, where we're trying to integrate you know, the emotional, uh, psychological, physical problems and seeing how the planets are impacting your chakras and how things are not working and what healing modalities we can do to get your chakras working again. There is a very practical side of this. It really needs to be workshopped um, intensely, um, but we had to introduce it first, so uh, to be continued. Okay, so um, final Jeopardy answer is? Okay. Okay, I know we're on overwhelm. I, I do thank you for. Uh, I, I, I now we do know. Now I knew. Next time I have a, an ice storm, I know I can use my hotspot, and we can get good reception. And and I'm I'm glad we worked out that problem. I'm so sorry about last week, um, and the first few minutes of this week until we solved the problem. Actually, it's totally amazing that I didn't have to switch off the video. Let's hope the video recorded because the you know i i will find out in a minute <laughs> okay guys um um thank you um and um uh to be continued next week um namaste thanks barry thank you thank you thank you bye-bye